So I've been playing around with a number of different AI tools over the last year, as so many other folks on the internet have been doing as well. Earlier in January, I released a video showing um, how I was using ChatGPT to geocode. Well, I've also been playing around with a tool called Midjourney. I'm sure many of you have heard of this. It allows you to create images based on text prompts. So in this video, I wanna share some of the results I have seen using this tool. It's a premium tool with a monthly fee and I would just say right away, it's definitely worth the money. I'm not sponsored by them. This is just based on what I've seen. I'm a paying member. I'm not affiliated in any way. I also want to be clear. I don't want you to be confused. I'm not going to be focusing on any kind of like creating any base maps or focusing on creating boundaries like accurate boundaries of any countries or districts or anything like that. This is strictly focusing on generating imagery so that you can create dynamic icons or symbology or just things that you can place on top of a map. Also, I want you to be aware that this field is changing so rapidly. Things are moving so fast that probably by the time I upload this video, it's going to be out of date. So I was interested in Midjourney because there are plenty of times where I'm using imagery in my maps. Now here's a perfect example. This is a Vasco da Gama map. You can see the route animating on in the background. And in the foreground, we have the prominent image of the da Gama illustration. Now generally for my workflows, what I'll do is if I'm working on a map with a historical figure, usually one that's pretty popular, I know that I'll be able to go to Wikipedia and find you know, maybe a handful of images that are under a Creative Commons license. And then I'll go and find one, download it, bring it into Photoshop, and then Photoshop out the background, bring it into Adobe After Effects and place it on my map, and then animate it to my heart's content. There can be a few problems that you run into or obstacles, such as if the historical figure is not very very prominent, it can be hard to find imagery. Other times you're gonna find imagery that is either under a copyright, so you can't use it, or it's not high enough resolution that it's gonna look good in like an ultra HD 4K composition. This is where Midjourney shines, and I'm gonna show you why. So if you're totally new to Midjourney, this works in Discord, and you can essentially do the text prompts via a direct message to a Midjourney bot. So right down here, I'm gonna go in and type a prompt which is uh, forward slash imagine, and this is how you create images with Midjourney, and now you type in the prompt. So I'm just gonna go in and show you what happens if I just type in Vasco da Gama's name. It's gonna take a little bit of time here to generate these images. Now, if I click on this, you can see I have some very cool options here with these backgrounds. Look at this background, it's amazing, except for, uh, I don't know what this is going on here. So you can see down here, we have these little squares. This says U one through four, and then we have V one through four. The U stands for upscale. So if we wanna choose one of these and essentially like export it out to where we can download it, it basically means like export it out in the highest resolution that Midjourney is gonna allow us. You hit upscale and one, two, three, four is gonna allow you to select which one you want. I think it's one, two, three, four. And for V, that stands for variation. And that's if we wanna generate a variation of one of these. So actually I wanna find out which one's two. So let's say we wanna upscale two. And then when you upscale, it gives you a ton of other options. So I can create variations based on this version. I can also do zoom out. So it's gonna zoom out and generate more of this background. I definitely don't wanna do that. Create a custom zoom and I can even favorite it and then launch it into the web here. It's telling me, do you wanna to go to the site, blah, blah, blah. And now it brings me to my Discord page where I can also you know, check out my library of my other downloads. And now right down here, I can save it out. Now, naturally, the real art is in the text prompts. You need to know how to prompt. Otherwise, you're just going to get, you're not going to be able to control your results. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of these backgrounds because my workflow is I'm bringing them into Photoshop and then I'm removing them from the background. So let's just make that step super easy. I can't, as of right now, and as far as I know, you cannot export an image that has transparency like an alpha channel. I mean... I assume that would be an option coming up, but as of right now, I think it is not an option. So the way around this is you can you know, bring up the image prompt and then type in Vasco da Gama and then say solid white background. And now let's see what we get. Okay, now we've got some versions of him on a background. These look quite different. He looks a bit older, so we could come back. Let's do another one. We can say image prompt. Young Vasco da Gama, solid white background. And you'll notice it doesn't always obey the text prompt. There's solid white background, but it's still giving us this 
That's not solid white. This one's looking more photorealistic. Whoa. One thing to be aware of is I've noticed that Midjourney is not really great with the accuracy of, you know, the fine details, like the type of hat here, when we're gonna look at the uniform or what he's wearing. I'm working on another project where I'm doing the same type of thing here in Midjourney using this on historic uh, World War II figures. And it's one of the key, like, downsides of it is that it's not getting the insignias and the logos correct, like the patches of, of each country, of the Axis and Allied powers. So be aware of that. You're going to get some history buffs that are probably going to tear you apart if you use the wrong imagery here. Now if we're looking for some other elements, I could say late 15th century sailing ship. Now these look right, but if you take a closer look, some of these can look off. It's a good start. Let's go grab another important historical figure in the late 15th century. Our boy, Christopher Columbus. Now this is giving us different statues and things, so let's actually bring that in a bit. So I can say portrait of Christopher Columbus. Now, I don't know about some of these hats. They look a little funky. But let's go ahead and do variations of number two and see what we get. Now let's see if we can get the king. Get the king of Portugal. Portrait of John II, king of Portugal. Solid white background. Let's see what we get. Now, I'm definitely no history buff, but I would say that if there's going to be a problem, it's definitely in the accuracy of the clothing here. So just from my brief use of this tool, I found that it is very good if you're trying to create imagery and variations of different imagery of popular historical figures. It just, it's A+. Plus. Now some of the problems that I encountered is you have to be sure that you check the details, for instance, the uniforms, the insignias, the patches. If you'd like to do a deep dive of how to turn imagery like this into these dynamic map labels, I have a whole standalone tutorial on that. Check it out, link in the video description. It's from a real world freelance gig. I show you how I created those. And again, those apply to that workflow where I'm pulling imagery from a Wikipedia and Wikimedia Commons. But that same workflow works amazing and works flawlessly with this mid journey tool. So I'm very curious to hear what you have to say about this. Please leave some comments down in the comment section section let me know what the mid journey alternatives are if you use I think it's called dolly and I, I have not tested any of the other tools so please let me know I'm especially interested in finding a tool that would allow me to upload imagery and basically generate different AI versions based on the photo I know that mid journey does that I only did like two brief tests of that and they were so terrible that I, I just didn't follow up on that anymore so please let me know or just in general if you've been playing around with AI tools I'm very interested to see what you create so hit me up down in the comment section or tag me on my socials at Boomless video and as always if you enjoyed the content be sure to hit that thumbs up button subscribe to my channel hit that notification bell all that stuff also go check out my content on felt I'm now working full-time with them they're turning me into a professional cartographer GIS expert I love it go check it out see you in the next one Special love and a big shout out to my tier 3 patrons. Thank you all so much for making this video possible. I appreciate it very much.